Hi, it's Jim from Janku, and I'm here with another SynFig tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at exporting a file from Inkscape and putting it into SynFig Studio so you can animate your vector drawings. Let's take a look at doing that. I'm going to go over here to Firefox where I have this website up right now, undraw.co, and this has a lot of great free-to-use SVG artwork, so it's definitely worth checking out. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to grab this share link SVG, and I'm just going to download that. I'll save it to my computer, and then if I come up here, I can actually grab this and pull it over into Inkscape like this. And that starts up the file here. And now, taking a look at this file, I could come in here and I could edit this a little bit if I wanted to before I send it over to Synfig. So for instance, I'll click on the shirt and I'll change it to purple. And then I could come in here and I go to File and then you would save this as and make sure that you choose the file format synfig animation and that's a .sif file so under here normally this would save it as an svg but just make sure that you're saving this .sif you can name the file whatever you want but this is important because synfig actually can't import normal svg files it has to import files of this file type so i'll save that under my downloads and then i'll come back to synfig studio and I'll just go to File, Import, and I'll grab that SIF file here and I'll import it. So you can see that the, the file is imported here. It's a little bit larger than the canvas. So if I come over to my Layers panel here and I select the file, I'll get this widget here that allows me to resize this. So I'm going to scale this image down a little bit so it fits on the canvas. And that looks great. And then if I open this folder up, you can see all the individual paths within here. So all these individual paths have individual nodes attached to them. So for instance, if I were to come in here and I were to grab something like this leg path, you can see all these individual nodes. But if I come in and I try to edit this, so let's say I want to move this knee out a little bit, you'll see this pop up that says the value we're trying to edit is in a composition. So it's not allowing you to edit this. So let me close this. And one way you can get around this is if you come up and you open a new animation file. So I'm going to go to File, New, and you'll see a new tab here is open with Animation 2. I come back to my original animation, and if I just click the first path here, and I scroll down to the bottom, and I hold Shift, and I click the last one, I can select all of those. And then if I Control c to copy this, and then go to my new animation, and in my Layers panel, I come over, and I Control v in there, I can paste all those paths to this new section. Now, You'll notice with this new pass here, I can actually start editing these individual nodes. So if I were to come and, for instance, say I wanted to change this little node here and move it out a little bit to make it a little bit fatter, you'll notice that that actually adjusts now. I'm going to press Control Z to bring it back to what it was previously, but I, I can adjust these individual nodes. One thing I want to do to fix this image so it all fits on the canvas here is I'm going to control click on these selected paths and I'm going to press group layer and that's going to put it in this normal group like we had previously and I'm going to select that and again I'm going to scale this down so it fits on the page but now I can come in here and I can use my tool so I'm going to with my transform tool selected I'm going to come in here and I'm going to double click on the section I want to transform and that select the leg and now I can adjust this how I want. So I'm going to bring the knee out a little bit. Maybe I want to change this shoe here so I can come in and I can move this out a little bit, make the shoe a little bit bigger, maybe this like that. And you can adjust your artwork however you want to do it there. Now we have these paths that can be manipulated. We can actually start looking at animating these things a little bit. So I'm going to come in here and I'm actually going to click on this link. So what I want to do is I want to have an animation where this open link comes together and forms a closed link. So I'm going to click on the link here and notice there's a lot of individual paths that are making up this link. So I can come in and I'm actually going to hold down control. I'm going to click these individual sections so I select all of it. And notice as I control click the different paths actually highlight over here in the right hand panel. And I'm going to do scroll and I'm going to control click and I'm going to select all these individual sections and then I let go of control so I can scroll around a little bit. I'm going to then hold it down again and control click these sections here, scroll a little bit and then I can hold down control and I can zoom in or out. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then I'm going to control click the hair 
the face, neck, shirt. And then I'm just gonna continue control clicking around here to select the rest of the image. Now just keep in mind, anytime I wanna scroll the image, I'm gonna let off the control button and I'm gonna scroll it. And then I'm gonna hold down control again and I'm gonna click the next sections. So make sure you get all the image here. And I'm just going to leave this background line. I don't really care that that moves with it at all. So now that I have all these sections, I'm gonna scroll out again. You can see I have basically this whole right hand part of the image selected over here. I'm going to right click on this layers panel here and I'm going to group these layers as well. So now these are put into this individual group here and you'll notice we now have a toggle widget where we could scale or change the position or the rotation of this part of the image. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come in to my timeline and I'm gonna set at say 24 frames here or let's, let's start at 48 for now, just so we can see this animation in slower motion. And I'm going to go to my keyframes and I'm going to add a new keyframe. And you see now we have one at 48 frames. And let's go back to the beginning of our animation here. And I'm going to press this little animate button to turn on animation mode. I'm going to jump to the 48th frame. And then I'm gonna grab this widget here and I'm just gonna move the position of this so these links look like they are closed here. So that looks pretty good, I think. And now if I were to turn off this animation, I could play this. Let me come back to the beginning here and I'll play it. And you can see that that link just closes. That looks great. Now it's a little slower than I want it to be. So I could actually come in here and you can see this little node right here, I could move this node, which is the transition here, and I can move it to 24 frames, and if I were to play that from the beginning, you notice it happens a little bit faster now. I could actually come in here and I could move the keyframe if I wanted to. I'm going to just do that. Now you notice when I do this, the animation that we had moved to half of the time it was before, and so if you were to play this, it's gonna play a little faster. And maybe we don't want that so I can move this back to where it was on the keyframe before, but now it's at 24 frames, so great. We have our animation kind of moving in here. And if we wanted this to move back out, so say we want the link to close and then open back up, we could do that. The easiest way to go about doing that is to actually come and just duplicate the keyframe that is happening at the beginning of time where the animation is wide. So you can see that's the end state that we want here. Let's bring our timeline to the 48th frame here and let's just highlight our first keyframe here and let's right click on it and say duplicate keyframe. So now we have that keyframe duplicated at 48 because that's where our cursor was on the timeline. And if we play this now from the beginning, you'll notice that the link comes in and then goes back out. So we have that kind of continuous loop of just bringing the link together and bringing it open. And what we can do now is we have all this dead space at the end of our file here. We could actually go to our canvas properties and we could select our time tab and we could change this. So we don't need this to go to 120 frames anymore. We really want it to just end at 48 frames, which is essentially the same as our beginning state. So come in here to our end time and select 120 and change that to 48. And that will automatically change the duration to one frame longer, so 49. Press apply and say okay. And now you'll notice that our animation is the whole timeline down here. And if we just play it, it'll just do our specific animation of closing and opening back up and we're good to go. If you want to export this file, the way you would do that is go to file, render, and then just make sure that you choose an AVI format and you can leave your target as auto. And I might name this instead of Synfig animation 2, I might just call this link. And then I'm just gonna put this on my desktop and I'm gonna say okay. And let's just render that. Now if I come to my desktop, you can see here this file has been created here, this link.avi file. And if I open that, you can see our animation. Great, so that works. Hopefully that tutorial is helpful for you to understand how to get a file from Inkscape into Synfig Animation. And hopefully that allows you to understand how you can manipulate the file either in Inkscape or in Synfig and create really cool, fun animations with it. Stay tuned for more of these tutorials in the near future and thank you for watching the video.